Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Lee Potvin, and I am a professor in the Department of Experiential Studies and Community and Sport. And as some of you know, in our, in our department, a lot of our courses happen collaboratively and our students are working together. Uh, and we often hear people say that our courses, uh, like our other uh, colleagues in SAS, are uh, group work courses. And what I want to talk to you about today is the difference between sort of group work or working in a group and actually thriving in a group, which involves being a good collaborator. So that being a good collaborator involves a few key points and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today which is you have to know yourself really well as a person and as a learner to be a good collaborator you have to be effective and timely in your communication and you have to be accountable and reliable uh, as a collaborator in uh, in a group setting so um, the first point knowing knowing yourself well I think what's really important when when you want to know yourself well is to understand what you're good at um, what you feel excited to do when it comes to a task or working with a group of people whether you're working on individual assignments, but you're part of a classroom community, whether you're actually working on an assignment together. And then knowing the stuff that you don't like to do as much, or maybe isn't your strength. For me, I'm not the best at uh, taking notes and being the sort of recorder in a group. That isn't always my strength. So I know that about myself. So that means if I'm in a group, I can say to my group members, you know, when it comes time to report back um, or to share information, I'm very good at that. And I would like to do that, but I'm not going to be the one to take notes because I'm actually not very good at capturing other people's ideas in a way that makes sense. So this can really help guide you. You can sort of take the lead in knowing where you are the strongest contributor because sometimes when we're trying to collaborate, we're left feeling a little bit lost. We don't really know what our role is. And if you're not a person who is the first one to stand up and have the idea, or you need a little bit of time to reflect on that, um, we can internalize that as not being good at collaborating, but it just means finding your fit, finding your place in the group. So um, some questions that you can ask yourselves uh, to figure out uh, you know, who you are as this learner, as this contributor, as this collaborator to a group is, you know, what kinds of tasks do you enjoy? Are you a person who really likes putting a PowerPoint together? Or maybe you really like talking in front of groups like me, or maybe you're a person who really likes to figure out the data, the data management side. So you like to create charts and, and, uh, you know, slot different readings or articles or ideas into a patterned way of thinking about them. Um, and so that can really, that can really help you if you, if you start thinking about that. It, sometimes this is guided by our hobbies and our interests. You may be someone who uh, is, is very active and who, and who likes to play on teams, or maybe you prefer to do things on your own. And it's good to know that. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't work well with other people regardless. And just also because you like to be on a team or work, play on a team, doesn't make you a good collaborator either. Liking to work on your own um, doesn't mean you're not good at it. So it's really what I'm trying to emphasize is just that you have a strong sense of who you are. And if you don't have that, that strong sense of who you are and what you can bring um, to, to guide yourself through some reflective exercises. So, um, and then think about, put yourself in, in the shoes of someone that you're working with. How do you present yourself to people and how might they receive you? If you're like me and you like to talk, uh, sometimes people who like to talk put people who are, um, who are more timid or who like to speak less uh, at ease. And then at the same time, sometimes we make people feel like, you know, we've kind of walked all over them and they didn't get a lot of space. So try to, try to have a sense of how you are as a person and how that impacts other people. Um, I think the most important thing though, is that regardless of your interests, um, your, what are your strengths, what are your areas for growth, um, Everyone has something to contribute to a classroom environment or a group project or, um, you know, a, a Zoom call related to your to your coursework. We all have a place and the, the best person to advocate for you is you and the, the best person to know yourself is you because people may not people may not know that you really like to do data, data management or may not know that you like to stand up in front of a group and talk or they may not know that you like to, to do PowerPoints. So part of Underlying this is, is the second point uh, that I've been trying to, 
to make, which is to be effective and timely in your communication. So um, make sure that you that you try to be clear, as clear as you can to your group mates about what it is that you like to do. But also if someone, let's say, um, you know, your, your instructor or your professor asks you a question on a Zoom call about some feedback about an assignment that they've done or feedback on the syllabus, try to be uh, prompt in, in your responses. Maybe your instructor sends you an email and has some questions for you about some choices that you could make regarding coursework. Um, don't let those emails slip through the gaps. Or if you're in community studies and you're working in a group and, and you've created a group chat with your um, online with your classmates and people are trying to figure out a time to meet to discuss an issue outside of class, you know, don't leave it to the last minute. Try to try to deal with it in a time timely manner and, and try to be effective in your communication. So make sure you're being really clear, um, you know, that you're not using slang that people wouldn't understand or short forms or something like that. Um, one of the greatest uh, challenges that people have in group work is, is around these kinds of logistics, feeling like they're trying to take initiative, but people aren't responding. And sometimes we just fall through the crack because we all get lots of emails, we all get lots of texts. And, and then the final thing, uh, which ties into all of this as well, is being accountable and being reliable. So, you know, if you said you were going to do something, uh, try to do it. And if you didn't do it, be honest about why. Maybe you were ill. Maybe your uh, kid got sick. Maybe your neighbor needed help uh, getting out of the driveway because it's winter time. Um, you know, just be honest about that. Try to try to own own that and uh, and be clear to your to your group mates. And that'll give people the sense that even if life sometimes gets in the way, as it does, that you are a reliable person that they can count on um, to, to work with them. So I, I know that our online learning is presenting for some people a new way of doing things, instruct your professors, your instructors, your classmates, but we, we have this tool that we can use and, and we have control over our capacity to make it a good experience. So you can make this a good experience for yourself and for your classmates by uh, showing and demonstrating these uh, skills of collaboration that you, that, you are, that you have and that you're trying to cultivate um, so that you can be the most effective online learner. And then, you know, when we're back in the classroom face-to-face, -face, in the face-to-face -face environment, you'll, you'll benefit from these skills as well. So I wish you a really good semester and, um, you know, look forward to, look forward to seeing you in a virtual classroom uh, or a face-to-face -face one sometime soon. Take care.